the beautiful Brightwood Park of Westfield, New Jersey opened to the public in 1980. This 43-acre passive park features two new ponds and nearly two miles of walking trails. However, to look at this park today, there is barely a sign that this area was a predominantly African-American neighborhood that residents called home for nearly 60 years. Before the turn of the 20th century, this area was called Big Woods. In 1880, Westfield was a small village surrounded by farms and woods. It had a population of 2,200 residents, 94 were African Americans. When the Jersey Central Railroad Station opened in 1892, the town began to prosper with new residents arriving. By 1900, the town's population had doubled in size. New water and sewer mains and electric lighting were installed and a new streetcar or trolley line connected Westfield to Plainfield to the west. The trolley line passed within two blocks of the future neighborhood. Between 1900 and 1905, several real estate businesses subdivided the future Brightwood Park site into 340 small residential lots. Each subdivision had an attractive title such as Prospect Heights, Westfield Manor, Washington Heights, and Scandia Heights. Most lots were 25 feet by 100 feet in size. By 1910, most of the lots were sold for less than $100. They were purchased by individuals hoping to build a house or to profit from their investment eventually. Like many neighborhoods at that time, the paper streets were dirt paths at best, and there was no sewer or water service. Hence, residents relied upon wells and outhouses. At this same time, the Great Migration began. Hundreds of thousands of African Americans migrated from the South. They were pushed from southern rural areas due to brutal lynchings, callous Jim Crow laws, and the decimation of the cotton crop by the boll weevil. These factors made it difficult to survive and make a living. When World War I began, European immigration to the United States declined significantly, ending the primary source of labor in the North. Northern labor agents traveled the South to recruit African Americans to fill thousands of factory and mill jobs because of the labor shortage. Black newspapers like the Pittsburgh Courier and the Chicago Defender urged black Southerners to move north where they had better jobs, housing, and educational opportunities for their children. And they could vote. Experiencing a sense of freedom abroad, returning African-American veterans stationed in Europe during World War I wanted a different life when they returned home. Westfield, New Jersey had much to offer African Americans. It had an established black community since the revolution. And because the African American population was small, Westfield public schools were integrated. By 1920, 27 homes and one church were constructed within the future boundaries of the park. 90% of the houses were owned and are occupied by African Americans, which paralleled the development of the Jerseyland neighborhood in Scotch Plains, which bordered the area of the future Brightwood Park site. These two working class neighborhoods were the home of factory workers, maids, hotel porters, barbers, cooks, gardeners, laborers, and railroad workers. The Jerseyland neighborhood was also the home to the Westfield Golf Club, established in 1900 as a nine-hole golf course. Over the years, a close-knit community of African-American residents lived on both sides of the Westfield Golf Club. Although they lived nearby, African-Americans were not allowed membership in the White Country Club because of segregation. By the early 1920s, the Westfield Golf Club decided to merge with the Cranford Golf Club to form the Echo Lake Country Club. On September 21st, 1921, the Progressive Realty Company Inc., a group of African American investors, purchased the golf club and created the Shady Rest Golf and Country Club. Established to provide recreation and entertainment for African Americans of all ages, 
Shady Rest became one of the first African-American country clubs in the United States. Throughout the 1920s, the Shady Rest thrived as a social and recreational landmark for the African-American community. In November of 1922, the NAACP's The Crisis noted that the Shady Rest Country Club had over 200 members. In May of the following year, 10,000 African Americans gathered to hear a speech by W.E.B. Du Bois. With the Wall Street crash of October 1929, businesses closed their doors, factories shut down, and banks failed. This event began the Great Depression. By 1933, approximately one out of every four Americans was unemployed. To address the financial impact of the Depression, the federal government established two new housing programs, the Homeowners Loan Corporation, HLC, in 1933, which purchased nearly 1 million mortgages that were in default, nearly 20% of all mortgages. And the Federal Housing Administration, FHA, in 1934, which revised the terms of mortgages and introduced a government guarantee to lower interest rates. These programs were created to assist the struggling mortgage industry, the housing construction industry, and existing homeowners who defaulted on their mortgages. Another consequence of these new federal programs was the classification of mortgage risk standards that perpetuated racial segregation and excluded African American neighborhoods from qualifying for a mortgage. In 1935, the HOC began to designate communities into four categories of risk, from A or best, to D or hazardous. The Jerseyland community in Scotch Plains and the future Brightwood Park site in Westfield were in the same D-rated area denoted in maps in red, hence the term redlining. The impact of these federal housing programs prevented current or prospective property owners in these neighborhoods from qualifying for a mortgage. By 1940, the Big Woods neighborhood was surrounded by new development with paved roads, water, and sewer mains to support indoor plumbing. In contrast, the 25 homes on Liberty Street, Fanwood Avenue, Netherwood Avenue, and Smith Street had rutted dirt paths for roads, wells, for water, and outhouses for sanitation. Perhaps the saddest irony of the differences in the service to the Big Woods neighborhood to others nearby is that the Plainfield Union Water Company installed new water transmission mains on Netherwood Avenue and on Liberty Street in the 1940s and 50s directly in front of many of the residents' homes. Yet the homes in the Big Woods never received water service. In 1942, the president of the Westfield Board of Realtors announced at its annual convention that they intend to conduct and present a survey to the town council, focused on the twilight or blighted area of Westfield, mirroring the federal government neighborhood ranking system used by HLC for the Big Woods neighborhood. In 1943, the Board of Realtors produced a report to the town council, including photographs of every home in the Big Woods neighborhood and the small, mostly African-American neighborhood on the north side of Prospect Street. The Board of Realtors recommended that these two African-American neighborhoods be rezoned and replaced with garden apartments. The recommended rezoning did not occur, likely due to the opposition towards apartment complexes by neighboring single-family developments. In 1949, a town-appointed citizens' community issued a report reconfirming the recommendations of the 1943 Board of Realtors, but no action was taken to change the rezoning of the future Brightwood Park site. From 1940 to 1950, there were no foreclosures on property owners for non-payment of taxes within the future Brightwood Park. However, that practice changed in 1951, possibly motivated by the unsuccessful efforts to rezone the unwanted neighborhood. By 1956, the town acquired 99 or 29% of the lots in the Big Woods neighborhood via foreclosure for non-payment of taxes. None would be sold, which marked the beginning of an effort by the town to assemble this part of the Big Woods for township purposes. In the late 1950s, the town hired a planning consultant to evaluate two sites for a possible park. The consultant recommended the site in the Big Woods as it would be less costly for the town to acquire and was closer to the town's population center. 
public discussion of the possible acquisition of the entire site first appeared in a local Westfield leader in 1961. In 1964, the town council formally decided to buy the remaining private property in the Brightwood Park neighborhood to create a new park. By 1970, the town acquired most of the private parcels through negotiated sale. Six parcels were acquired through condemnation, including St. Thomas, Amy Zion Church, the portion of the Jerseyland Colored Community Park within Westfield, and several African American homeowners who refused to sell. Two homeowners, Samuel Jarvis and Cordelia Bell Spencer Perry Manier, were granted lifetime occupancy. Cordelia resided in her home at the corner of Fanwood Avenue and Netherwood Avenue until 1984 when she moved into a nursing home at the age of 98. In fact, her home was still in the park after it officially opened. In 1964, the Courier News interviewed Samuel Jarvis at his home at 1118 Fanwood Avenue. He told the reporter that he did not want to leave his home and had nowhere he could afford to go. Mr. Jarvis, a World War I veteran, sold his home to the town in 1968 for $4,000. The house had been in his family since 1907. Today you can stroll through Brightwood Park in Westfield and see the steps and or foundations of the church and some of the former homes of the people who lived there. They stand as silent reminders that there was once a neighborhood here, not so long ago, a predominantly African-American neighborhood. In a future production, we will explore the stories of these residents. Their stories illustrate a troubling time in our country's history, when the American dream that by hard work, a person would have the opportunity to marry, own a home, and raise a family was not permitted to all people.